الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم وقيل لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما الصراط المستقيم فقال هو ما انا عليه واصحابي كما قال صدق الله وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم my dear respected brothers in islam First of all I would like to make a dua to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala we are sitting here in this masjid only for your good pleasure O Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased and happy with us We are sitting here in connection to deen to say something for a while in the light of Quran and sunnah and to listen to it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me tawfiq to say what is right and give a tawfiq to the brothers to listen to it attentively. My dear respected brothers in Islam, we are in the month of Shaban. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, Rajab was Shaharullah, the month of Rajab which passed, that is the month of Allah, was Shaban was Shahari, and the month of Shaban, that is my month, was Ramazan was Shahar was Ummati, and the coming month, the month of Ramazan is the month of my Ummah. It means that these three months have a specific sharafat and nobility. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whenever he saw the new crescent, he used to make a dua, Allahumma hilla alayna bilamni wal iman, wa salamati wal islam. Wallah, have this crescent on us. With salamat and with Islam and with aman and iman. But whenever he saw the crescent of Robert Rajab, he used to make a specific dua. Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Shaban wa balligna Ramazan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in the month of Rajab. And in the month of Shaban, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us alive for the month of Ramazan. So we are in the month of Shaban, Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said, 
that sometime Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do as many fasting in the month of Shaban. He has never done in any other month. So it means that he was preparing himself for the holy month of Ramadan. Preparing himself for ibadat in Ramadan. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, Narrated by Sayyidina Ka'b ibn Ujra radiyallahu ta'ala an. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was going up to the pulpit and member to deliver a khutbah and a sermon. فَلَمَّا رَقَاءَ الدَّرَجَةَ الْأُولَى When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went to the first step of the member. He said, Ameen. فَلَمَّا رَقَاءَ الدَّرَجَةَ الثَّانِيَةَ When he went to the second step, he said, Ameen. When he went to the third one, he said, Ameen. فَلَمَّا فَرَقْ When the job was done and accomplished, سَأَلْنَا We asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, سَنَوَتَ الْيَوْمَ شَيْئًا لَمْ تَكُنْ تَسْنَاهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ That, O the Messenger of Allah, Today you didn't practice such a thing. We have never seen you doing this. Means saying Ameen, 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 going to the pulpit. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Today when I was going to the member, Jibreel came and he said, Ba'udaman rahmatillah, Mam maza alayhi ramazanu falam yughfar lahu. That may be that guy too far from the rahma and mercy of Allah who found the month of Ramadan and he didn't do ibadah to such an extent which could be a source or sabab of maghfira and forgiveness for him. So it means that he got a golden and ample opportunity but he lost it. He couldn't avail it. <laughs> As you know, that what is success? And who is a successful man? So here in this world, they say that the one who knows the opportunity and he can avail the opportunity. That is regarding worldly things and worldly attachment. People are looking for such a occasion or not? Say. Say. Yes. Yes. So if somebody, he doesn't know the opportunity, he will never get into success. And someone who knows the opportunity but he couldn't avail it. So once again he is the loser. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in this hadith that Jibreel Amin said Ba'udan rahmatillah Mammaza alayhi ramazanu falam yaghfar lahu That a Muslim he got the opportunity he couldn't avail it because this opportunity is coming on taqweeni basis. Taqweeni basis means natural process. You are taking notice of it or you don't. But the month of Ramadan will come or not? Yes. Say, yes. so that is only taqweeni. It does not depend on your choice or your will or your intention. That is amri taqweeni. But what is your duty? To avail the opportunity. To exploit the opportunity, to utilize the opportunity. So if you are not, it means that you are the loser and you lost it. And the second thing, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ba'udawan rahmatillah, man zukirtu indahu falam yusalli alayya. That that guy may be far away of the rahma of Allah, that my name is mentioned in his presence. And he didn't say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As Muslims, as followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as his ummah, whenever his name is mentioned, we used to say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For two things, giving him a due respect. Who is the utmost respectful person and respectable person? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How you will express that respect to him? That whenever his name is mentioned, so you have to say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
يعني الحديث تركت باي امام ترمذي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سيس ديت من صلى علي واحدا صلى الله عليه عشرا that whosoever said salat on me once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him ten rahmah yes what an easy earning what a credit it does not take more than 30 seconds sallallahu alayhi wasallam but not 30 seconds even 10 15 seconds sallallahu alayhi wasallam and you are getting 10 reward for 10 seconds easy job or difficult very easy very beneficial very useful very productive so rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that jibril ya man said baghda an rahmatillah من ذكرت عند من ذكرت عنده فلم يصلي عليا. Your name is mentioned in front of Muslims and they didn't say صلى الله عليه وسلم. He may be far away from the mercy of Allah. And number three, when I went to the third step, so Jibril Amin said, بعد عن رحمة الله من أدرك أبواه الكبرى أو أحدهما فلم يصلي far away from the mercy of Allah in whose life and presence his father became old. His mother became old. Both of them or any one of them. And he didn't give them such like services which can take him to Jannah. So it means that he had the opportunity. He couldn't avail it. He had the opportunity. He lost it. So I said, Amin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa qaza rabbuk. Allah ta'budu illa iya. That your Lord has decreed. Qaza. You know the word Qazi. Qazi means the judge who decrees. So wa Qaza. Your Lord has decreed. Wa Qaza Rabbuka Allah ta'abudu illa iya. The decree of your Lord is not to worship but only Him. Because worship is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala iya ka na'abudu. Only you do we worship. And only your help and support we do seek. So an ibadah is only for Allah. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا Not to worship but only Him. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانَ And وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَن تُحْسِنُوا بِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانَ and another decree of your Lord is to do ihsan and show kindness to your parents. So now Mori Samir says that this ihsanan, grammatically in Arabic language, that is maf'uli mutlaq. And maf'uli mutlaq means perfection. So Allah says, وَأَن تُحْسِنُوا بِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا To do a perfect ihsan to your parents. Now, what is perfection? Depend on the circumstances. Depend on the situation. What situation your parents are there in. And what type of perfect ihsan you can do to them. Then only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us one picture of that ihsan. إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْفٍ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا That if both of them or one of them they went to their old age and old age is where he does not understand what he says or she does not understand what she says and it causes you anger but you are holding yourself. Yes? Not this. That mom, what are you saying? Are dead? What are you? Allah says, no. فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْفٍ Not to show attitude even. Not to say off to them even. They will be saying things. إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكَبَرِ كِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْفٍ As we say in Urdu also, أُفْنَكَ Yes. So, of nakar mean, zip your mouth. Yes. Don't say, oh my God. Yes. This is also not allowed. Right? 
regarding your father and mother and such like age. They are saying, yeah. oh my God. وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا Nahar mean to, to, to stop him with rough word. Baba or Mama وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا They are speaking unsuitable words or unsuitable things. وَقُلْ لَهُمَا But you should not retaliate in the same way. You should say to them respectable words. That yes, Baba. Yes, Mama. Yes, yes, Baba. Yes, Mama. وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا And then Allah says, وَخْفِزْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الظُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ And lower to them the wing of humbleness with kindness. Now this is little meaning. This is little meaning. Technical meaning of this sentence is وَخْفِزْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الظُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ Lower yourself to them as much as you can. وَخْفِزْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الظُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَقُلْ رَبِّ رْحَمُهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ صَغِيرًا And you are doing all this, but still, you cannot perform your duty in the proper way. You cannot fulfill your job in the proper way. You are bound to make a dua. وَقُلْ And say, رَبِّ رْحَمُهُمَا Oh Allah, be kind to them. Rabbi Rahmuma. Oh Allah, be kind to them. Have your mercy on them both. Kama Rabbayani Sabira. So this Kama, for Sheikh Samir, that Kama is Talili, is Rabbayani Sabira. Because they nourished me when I was too small. And what was that type of nourishment? You were in control of your pee and poop? Say. Who was taking care of your pee and poo? <coughs> your mama. So, what they have done, can you do that? You cannot. That's why you are bound to make dua. It was like you cannot do what she has done. وَقُلْ رَبِّ رَحَمْهُمَا Is رَبَّيَانِ كَمَا Is in the meaning of ta'aleel. Is رَبَّيَانِ سَغِيرًا Or say, وَقُلْ رَبِّ رَحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَحِمَانِ Is رَبَّيَانِ سَغِيرًا We call it إِدْمَاجِ نَعِمُ التَّفْسِيرِ Yes, Mr. Samir? You need some time to spend. Yes, inshallah. وَقُلْ رَبِّ رَحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ سَغِيرًا اَيْ وَقُلْ رَبِّ رَحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَحِمَانِ اِذْ رَبَّيَانِ سَغِيرًا And Allah be kind to them. As they both were kind to me. When is رَبَّيَانِ سَغِيرًا When they were developing me. Or they were growing me. Or they were nourishing me. Or they were taking care of me when I was too small. My dear respected brothers, in Islam, a sahabi came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, ma haqqul walidayn alayya ba'da amma ta'ah. As long as your parents are alive, you are bound to try to your best to provide them services, whatever you can do. But when mother or father they die. So sahab, a sahabi, he asked the Prophet sallam, that is there any due right of my parents after their death incumbent on me? Ma haqqul walidayni alayya ba'da an mata. What's the due right of my parents after their death? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, as salatu alayhima. The first right is to perform their salat janazah. To perform their salat janaza because salat janaza or ghusl that is incumbent on asaba waris. Who will give shower and ghusl to the dead body? The one who, in case of inheritance, is taking the big share. Yes, in case of a male dead, he is a male person. In case of a female dead, she is a female person. So the one who is taking a big share in the property, Islamically, he or she is bound to give this. Yes? Now, when our kid and kin dies, we are looking for someone to give him shower. Does it make sense? Does it make sense to make your father naked to a stranger? To make your mother naked to a stranger woman? 
Got it? This is Sharia. Now, some people, they are making excuses, but I don't know. Actually, this is not the case, that he does not know, he doesn't want to do. Yes, that I don't know. Oh, brother, from the very birthday of yours, you know everything or you learned? See? You learned. So this is also a case of learning. Yes. So in my area, when somebody dies, and he said, that, do you know someone to give a shower? I said, yes. I know someone to give a shower. He said, who? I said, you. <laughs> yes. Because that is your father. Yeah. So that's you. Yeah. So he said, but I don't know. I said, I'll teach you. Yes. What is difficult? You are making your stinger or not? He says, yes. I say, just make the stinger for your dead father. Yes. I said, do you know how to make your wudu or not? He said, yes, I know. I said, don't put water in his mouth and nose, and the remaining process is the same as you are doing your own wudu. Yes. You are taking shower or not? He says, yes. I said, the same way you have to give shower to your dead. So that's easy way. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَلْيَغْسِلْ مَوْتَاكُمْ وَمَنَاوْكُمْ Prophet says, if the case is other way around, a stranger is giving shower to your dead. So Prophet says, the person concerned must be a person who is amin and trustworthy. Because sometimes there are some defects in the body of the person concerned. Or sometimes in the time of giving him ghusl, because that is sharia, that first you have to push his stomach. Before Istinja, you have to push his stomach. If some stuff is there, so let it go out. He cannot hold it anyway because now the muscles are dead. The stuff which is inside your body, the pee or poo, why you are holding it? Because your muscles are tight. But the dead one, his muscles are tight? That is loosened. Yes, so it will go out. So push it, it will go out. Then wash it. Now, when you will push the stomach, stuff will come out or not? Yes. If somebody who does not have haya and sharam, and he does not have dignity, he does not have karama, so if he is giving shower to your dead, and later on in Madhya he said, oh, you know, the father of Mr. So and so, when I was giving you whistle, and I pushed the stomach, so that much stuff came out of his what is this? Rasulullah says, Wal yaqsil mawtakum umanaukum. That the ghusl of your dead must be given by a mean people. You know all these things are not. That's why I'm teaching you. Got it? Wal yaqsil. That look, how Prophet is curious about our wisdom and our honor. The honor and dignity of our dead that your dead may not be humiliated after his death even. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says that when somebody dies and you know any good of him, faskurhu, so mention that if you know a lot of bad and evils of him, faskutu anhu. Mention it not. Why? You are talking about the evils of a dead. Yes, if you know one good of him, mention it. So the angels will say to Allah, yes, this Baba, he said that he was a nice man. That Kaka, he said that he was a nice man. So if ten people will say like this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, okay, ten people say that he's a good, just go ahead. <laughs> so Rasulullah says, فَأَحْسِنُوا مَحَاسِنَهُ وَكُفُّوا عَنْ مَسَاوِيهِ The wording of the Prophet Stop from mentioning his evils. And mention if his good, if you know any. So anyhow, coming back to the topic that we are in the month of Shaban. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was preparing himself for the month of Ramadan in the month of Shaban. Continuously he was fasting as many fast and as many days. That Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says, Hatta zananna annahu la yuftir. That we were feeling that he will not miss a day even. That constant he was in fasting in the month of Shaban. 
my dear respected brothers, let me tell you one thing else. This ibadah, this is ibadah or this is a duty? Say, this is ibadah. This is not a duty. A duty, you want to accomplish your job and to get rid of it as soon as possible. Yes or not? Yes. Say, yes. 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 But ibadah, you should not treat it like this. That let me, yes, get rid of my prayer as soon as possible. And that's why, because we cannot differentiate between duty and ibadah, so that's why we are looking for easy way out. If you will think of ibadah, then that is ibadah. And ibadah is based upon love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then, when you are meeting your beloved, you will try to get rid of it or to prolong the session. Prolong the session. Prolong the session. Yes, there is a narration or a, or a story. That somebody saw a dream. In his dream, he saw Prophet وسلم, and Sayyidina Musa. وسلم. So Musa وسلم, he said, Ya Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that you spoke about the ulama of your ummah to that high level that they are like this and this and this and this. Mm -hmm. I want to test a alim of your ummah. Because you are mentioning their virtues. <coughs> so, Prophet ﷺ said, okay. So he said, people were sitting there. So he called one. So this guy, or the alim, who is seeing the dream, he said that that was Imam Ghazali. That was what? No, that that was Imam Ghazali. So he came. He paid tribute and saluted them both. Yes. And then Musa ﷺ asked him, Masmuk. What's your name? So he said, Abu Hamid, Muhammad ibn Ahmad ibn Muhammad al Ghazali. Yes. What's your name? He said, Abu Hamid, Muhammad ibn Ahmad ibn Muhammad al Ghazali. So Musa والسلام, said, Man, I ask your name, not your nasab and lineage. You prolong the story. What? Prolong you prolong the story. So the answer was Muhammad. What's your name? Muhammad, and you said Abu Hamid, Muhammad ibn Ahmad ibn Muhammad al-Ghazali. Yes, so he said, but Allah asked you, O the Messenger of Allah, wa ma tirka bi yaminika ya Musa, that what is there in your right hand? So the answer was supposed to say, ya Aswai, this is my stick. This is my stick. But you said, ya Aswai, atawakkau alayha. You mentioned there a list of its benefits. That this is my stake. I do this with this. I do this with this. I do this with this. I do with this with this. Yes? So you did the same thing. I'm your muqallid. I followed your footsteps. Why you prolonged your answer? So Musa والسلام, said, Because I was looking for Allah. When I found him, I tried to prolong my session with him. Because he's my beloved. So he said, Oh Musa, you are my beloved. I try to prolong my session with you. <laughs> Got it? So Ibadat. Now Ramazan is coming. So the people once again will start. That is 8 or that is 10 or 20. <laughs> yes or not? Got it? Not it. That Travi is 8, eight or 20. Yeah. When this question comes, it means that the guy is thinking of Ibadat that that's a duty, this is not Ibadat. Got it? Otherwise, if somebody is in love with Allah, he will prolong the session or shorten it? Prolong it. Say, prolong it. he will prolong it. And that's why. Imam Malik ibn Anas. Who? Imam Malik ibn Anas. Rahimahullah. When he was told in Medina that Imam, the people of Mecca, they are lucky people. He said, what do you mean? We are also lucky living in the city of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And Imam Malik rahmatullahi said, that is little a luck that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that on the day of judgment, the first ever intercession I will do in the court of Allah, ask him for forgiveness, that will be the people of Medina. And that's why our elders, that's why our elders, for their death, 
they come all the way from their own countries and they are living in Medina and they are old age to die there to become the people of Medina to have the intercession and shifa of Prophet in the very first stage. Got it? Mawlana Habibullah Sahib Muhajir Madani, Rahmatullahi Alayhi. He came all the way from India, living there in Medina. For what? For his death. For what? Mawlana Badri Alam Miriti, Muhajir Madani, Muhaddis of Darulum Deoband. He left his Darsi Hadith and in old age he came to Medina, living there for his death in Medina. Shaykh al Hadith, he left his Darsi Hadith in Saharanpur and he came and got settled in Medina for what? To die there for his death. Because Shafa'ati, on the day of judgment, my Shafa'a in the very first stage will be for the people of Medina. So for that, these ulama and these elders. They came and they were living there in Medina. So my dear respected brothers, Imam Malik Ramatullahi Alayhi said, this is little a luck, a little a sa'adat that we are living in the city of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They said, Imam, we are saying something else. He said, what's that? He said that, Tarwiha. What? Tarwiha. And it's pluralist Tarawiha. So Taraweeh is actually the, not the name and title of this prayer. Taraweeh is the plural of Tarweeha. And Tarweeha is that sitting which we are doing after every four rakat. Got it? What is Tarweeha? The sitting after every four rakat. Its plural is Taraweeh. And plural at least it should be three. Three Tarweeha. So that's what I said to one Salafi Alim. He said, Sheikh, you are right. I said that if you are praying two rakat, so you are doing only one tarweeha, it should not be called taraweeha, it should be called tarweeha. Yes? When you are using the same word taraweeha, so it means you are using plural. Yes? So at least it should be 16. Because, because the less number of jama is three. So you have to make three tarweeha. So when you are making three tarweeha, so it means that you are praying 16 rakat. Got it? At least. Anyhow, that is another case I am referring to something else. They, ibadat must be with love or in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should not look for any easy way out. Yeah. In ibadat, we are looking for, look, let me tell you one thing. I don't know, I have money or I don't have it. No, I am not distributing it. <laughs> yes. I don't know that much. But anyhow, and look, this is five dollars. Yes, and this is one dollar. I'm holding it like this. I have one grandson. So he is very smart, mashallah. So when I give him one dollar, he's five and a half year old. When I'm giving him one dollar, he said, no, not this one. So I said, which one? He said, the one which has one and two zeros. <laughs> <laughs> which has one zeros. and two zeros. Yes. So now if I will hold this to a baby, and I will say, that choose any one of that. So what do you think? If he has little bit maturity about money, so he will jump to which one? The five one. So now look, this is one the thing and one the wealth. You are jumping to the five one. When it comes to deen, so you say, what is the easy way? I mean the small bill. Why you are jumping to the small bill then? And not going for the heavy bill? Why? Because you do not understand that this is ibadah. This is not a duty. Duty, people are trying to get rid of as soon as possible. And ibadah. People want to prolong the session. So anyhow, my dear respected brothers, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. this is a case of Taraweeh. Let me take you to another thing Imam Bukhari narrates. I'm, I'm referring to. That Imam Bukhari narrates, the Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqumu minal layli hatta tawarramat qadamahu. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Tahajjad prayer, 
he used to stand as long or that long that his feet were swelling. So the prayer, if you will take it too much high, so you will be saying that that is extraordinary nafal. Not common nafal, that is extra ordinary nafal. But you cannot say that is sunnat muakkad. You cannot say that is wajib. You cannot say that is faraz. So now this extraordinary nafal, Prophet sallallahu was prolonging the session that much, hatta tawarramat yadawahu, qadamahu. That his feet were swelling. Now Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, Awa ma qad ghafarallahu laka min zambik. Allah has not created you ma'asum. Ma'asum is someone who is not committing sin. The messenger of Allah is committing sin? No. <coughs> if he is committing sin, he will never be a role model. Role model requires perfection. Perfection means no fault, no mistakes, no shortcomings. So Sayyidah Aisha says, if somebody is doing a lot of ibadah, means he is trying to forgive his sins. Or to get his, get his sins forgiven. So Sayyidah Aisha said, Awa ma qad ghafarallahu laka min zambik. Which means, Allah has not created you ma'asum. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, When Allah has done me that big, big a favor, afala akunu abdan shakura. Should I not be a thankful slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I am doing that to pay thanks to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Malik, Rahmat Jazakallah. Imam Malik, Rahmatullah alayhi. The people said that people of Makkah are lucky because when they are doing tarweeha, and regarding tarweeha, the sunnah amal is, but we are in hurry because only in the morning we are to go to earn more dollars. We don't have that much time. Otherwise, the tarweeha should be to the extent of the time of four rakat. If you prayed four rakat tarawi in ten minutes, then tarweeha is sunnah ten for ten minutes. If you prayed four rakat in twenty minutes, then tarweeha must be up. Twenty minutes. Twenty. That's the proper sunnah. Yeah, but we have weaknesses and we have so many needs and necessities. So that's why this is Allah Allah Akbar. Yes. And then, yes, then another tarweeha, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allahu Akbar. Got it? So they said that Imam, they are not sitting. They are using that sitting also. So he said, how? He said that they make a tawaf. After every four rakat, they are making a tawaf because they have Kaaba there. We in Medina do not have Kaaba. So we are deprived of that ibadah. That is the eagerness regarding muhabbat. That's the eagerness regarding ibadah to be considered as a practice of muhabbat. So they said, we don't have Kaaba here. So they are lucky people. They are making a tawaf after every four rakat. So Imam Malik Ramatullah he said that there is a riwayah of Ibn Abbas that four rakat nafal are equal to one tawaf. Those who do not have the opportunity to make tawaf, so they have to make Four rakat nafal, so okay. Instead of tarbiha, we will pray another four rakat. In between. In between. So now 20 plus 16, because four tarbiha, every tarbiha, four rakat. Huh? So 20 plus 16, 36. 36. So that's why in the mother of Imam Malik Tarabi is 36 rakat. Got it? But we have a dispute about 8 and 20. We never talk about 36. Somebody asked me that, Sheikh. Yes, so tell us the reality that uh, uh, how many rakats are there? I said 36. <laughs> he said, what? 36? I said, yes, 36. He said, we never heard it. I said, you will never, you are never been eager for Ibadah. That's why you never heard it. You will hear it if you have an eagerness like that of Imam Malik ibn Anas, Rahmatullah alayhi, and still in Africa. Still? In Africa, most masajid they are paying 36 rakat because they are the followers of Imam Malik ibn Anas, Rahmatullahi alayhi. So anyhow, my dear respected brother, think of ibadah that ibadah is ibadah that is not a duty. Ibadah is ibadah that is not a duty. And for Mori Zahir. For who? Mori Say. For Mori Zahir. Yes, that what is ibadah? So I will give you a definition of ibadah 
then you will come to know that how the ibadah should be but must be. That what is ibadah? Ghayat of zulm. Say more you have. Ghayat of zulm. Min ghayat al hub. Lillahi azza wa jal. Fi mutaba'at al nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Four things. Utmost humbleness in humanity. What is ibadah? Utmost. When you are praying, so humbleness must be seen on your body from head to toe. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاةِ الْخَاشِرَةِ Yes. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ This قَدْ, we call it, what type of harf? Say, قَدْ حَرْفِ تَحْقِيق تَرْفِيق is surety. تَحْقِيق means certainty. Allah says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ for sure, the mu'minun are the successful people. Qad aflah al-mu'minun? What? Certainly. Or for sure, the mu'minin are the successful people. Who says it? Allah. Allah. But now, who are the mu'minin? Mentioning their qualities, their signs, their symbols, how you will recognize them. So the first one, Al-lazina hum fi salatim khashi'oon. Those, when they are praying, they are at most humble. When they are praying, they are at most humble. humble. Now if you are praying, and humbleness is not there, that prayer will not have any after effects. Yeah, duty that you've done, just go, Allah khair salah. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ They're those who are with khushu' when they are praying. And what is khushu'? As far as the case of heart is concerned, that is known to whom? Allah. I know your heart. No. You know mine. No. But as far as the body is concerned, you can feel the body language of other guy or not? Yes. yes. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Khushu must be seen on the body of that person who is praying. That actually he is praying humbly. Qadaf lahal mu'minun, allazina hum fi salatim khashirun. So, ghayat al-zul, utmost humbleness. Number two, min ghayat al with utmost love. Utmost humbleness? With utmost love. And for whom? Lillahi azza wa jal. For Allah alone. Iyya ka na'budu. Only you we do worship. Lillahi azza wa jal. Fi mutaba'at al-nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and how the ibadat have to be, or how the ibadat should be or must be, yes, in the mutaba'ah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now look, if you are praying or you are fasting or you are doing any ibadah, but humbleness is not there, this ibadah will get you no any benefit. Min ghayat al apparently, Khushu and humbleness is seen on your body. But from inside, you are not in love with Allah. So once again, you this. Lillahi Azza wa Jal. You are praying, but you are mingling and mixing other intention with your prayer as well. Rather than for the sake of Allah. So that would be considered a type of shirk. And fi mutaba'at al-nabi. That that must be. In, on, on, on the footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ. So if somebody is not praying as the Prophet prayed, so that's a batil and invalid prayer. So when you will keep in mind these four conditions, then you will come to know that what ibadah is. Got it? Or not it? So my dear respected brothers in Islam. Anyhow, so I have recited the ayah of Holy Quran which is known to every single mu'min and Muslim, even though if he is a small kid, because our small kid, the first thing we are trying to get it memorized to them, that is Suratul Fatiha. Yes or not? Our small kids, we say, say, 
الحمد لله رب العالمين so the kids say الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم so it means that the ayah which I recited إهدنا الصراط المستقيم that is known to the kids even so what it means? Ehdin as sirat al-mustaqeem. What is hedaya? Hedaya little meaning is guidance. So little meaning of the ayah is guide us to the straight path. Guide us to the straight path. So guiding to the straight path is called hedaya. But again, for more desire and more desire both. That is a term. The Hidayah is different to different sects in Islam. One sect is we, the Ahlul Sunnah. And the other sect is the Mu'tazila or the Rationalist. So us, the Ahlul Sunnah, we say that Hidayah is Ira'at tariq Showing the path to someone. For example, what is the name of your masjid? Of what? Rancho yes. Islamic society Rancho Cargo. <laughs> so somebody asks you there on that intersection that where is Islamic Center Rancho Cardova? And there you said that just go in this direction. Yes. A street or road will come. What is this street? Gold circle. Sunrise. Sunrise, yes. And sunrise go gold. Gold circle. Gold circle. That sunrise gold circle, take a right there, go a little bit ahead, you will see a big building, turn to right, so there is Islamic Center Rancho Cardova. Now the guy, he was standing there in that uh, intersection, and therefore he gave you only the wording like this direction. So Ahl Sunnah says that he did the guidance. He gave the Hidayah, got it? But Mu'tazila says that this is not Hidayah. Hidayah is Isal ilal Madlub. Yes, to take you to the final destination. To take you? To the final destination. So you ask someone that where is Rancho Card, Islamic Center of Rancho Cardova? So the guy said, Oh, I'm walking in front of you and you should follow me. And he brought you here, opened the door and said, Enter. So he said that he is actually did the Hidayah. Got it? So I call it to Ali Sunnah. Yes, given the direction, that is Hidayah. And that's what the Messenger of Allah was doing. Yeah. As far as approaching the final destination, Allah says, in the man ahbat. You cannot take anyone to the final destination. Taking someone to the final destination, which is Jannah, that is the job of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot do this job. But can we say that Abu Jahl, he was not taken to final decision by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So it means Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not do the hidayah. No. He did it. That was that khabiz that he was not getting it. Otherwise, if he will take into consideration what the Mu'tazila say, so then it means the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not do the proper hidayah of Abu Dhab, Abu Jahl, Walid ibn Mawir, and Nazr ibn Haris. He did it. But Allah said, "Inna kalat hadi man ahbabta, walakin Allah." They take it to find a destination that is the case of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if not your case. So, my dear respected brothers in Islam, they guide us to Sirat al Mustaqim. Now, when you are praying, you are reciting Surah Al Fatiha. Now, prayer, what do you think? This is Hidayat or not? Yes. Say, yes. Yes. so you are on Hidayah, and again you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide me. You are already guided. Yes? You have a bucket full of water in your hand. Yes? And then close your mouth to drink it. And you say that, well, I give me water. Like, oh, guy, you have it. <laughs> Just drink it. So you are on Hidayah and you are asking Allah, Salat al Mustaqim. So that's why we said to our brothers and students, they submit now Allah Salat al Mustaqim. We are guided because we are praying, Alhamdulillah, we have Iman, we have Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us stable on this Sirat al-Mustaqim. 
Why? Because every single step, there is a fear of misleading. There is a, 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 a fear of ضلالت الجمرهي. Because shaitan is there. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he turned him out of Jannah. He turned out whom? The shaitan. So this hadith, he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي لَأُزَيَّنَنَّ لَهُمْ وَلَأَخْوَدَنَّ لَهُمْ سِرَاتَكَ الْمُسْتَقِينَ I swear by your greatness. Look, what a hadith he is. He said to Allah, I swear by your greatness. He was a kafir, but he was believing in the greatness of Allah. قَالَ فَبِعِزَّتِكَ لَأُغْوِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ He said, I swear by your greatness, O Allah, that I will take them astray of the right path. وَلَا أَقُوبَنَّ لَهُمْ سِرَاتَكَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ They will be going on سِرَاتِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ I will be sitting there and attacking them, they are robbing them. Where? On freeway. Where? Because somebody, there is theft and there is robbery. What is the difference between theft and robbery? A thief, he is stealing in a hidden condition, not to be seen to anybody. Yes or not? Yes. That's called theft. theft. That's called theft. But robbery, he is challenging the authority, sitting on the freeway, having the guns. And that's why in law you will find that the definition of robbery will be applied to what? So at least seven people are there having the guns. Then the situations are detailed by Imam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullahi Alayhi that inside the city, inside the city and outside the city, so what the difference? So Imam Abu Hanifa Ramadullah says that robbery is considered which is close to the approach of the authority concerned. If far desert, there are seven, not ten people sitting here and robbing people. So Imam Abu Hanifa said they are not considered robbery. Because there is no any surveillance eyes. But here in the city, the sheriff is there or not? Yes. Say, yes. the FBI is there or not? Yes. The CIA or other agencies are there or not? Yes. So by doing so, these guys are challenging the authority and the government. So that is bigger a crime. That is what? Bigger. bigger. And that's why. A thief, he has taken the property and the wealth, but his only one hand has to be chopped. Yes, but the rubber, his right hand, left leg, or left hand, Right leg. Why? Because he is challenging the authority. He is making a mess. He is creating a turmoil. You are taking what I am saying or not? Yes. Sir. Yes, I am trying to make you attorneys. So that's why. Sure. Yes, so you have to make some money. Sure. <laughs> yes, attorneys are making good money. <laughs> yes, so anyhow, my dear respected brother of Islam, Ihdira Sirat al Mustaqeen. Keep us going on Sirat al-Mustaqeen. So Shaitan said to Allah, وَلَا أَقْوَدَنَّ لَهُمْ سِرَاتَكَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ I will be sitting on freeway and motorway. And everywhere, everyone is seen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not? Say, yesterday I was telling them in Kaab that there is a great muhaddis. Once again, Moli Zahir and Moli Samir. I am actually refreshing their memory. Yes, because they learnt it long, long ago. So I am refreshing their memory. Hmm? Imam Tirmid in the narration chain, he is mentioning a rawi, a very great muhaddis, his name is Khumayd al tawil What? Now you refresh your mind? It came into your mind? Say. Yes. It came into your mind? Huh? Wabi qala hatta sana Khumayd al tawil The great muhaddis. His name was Khumayd, but he was a tall man. He was a tall man. Now, to introduce him, so this hadith has been given to me by Sheikh Humayd, the long man. Humayd al tawil So Humayd al tawil rahimahullah, he came to Khalifa Sulaiman ibn Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. To whom? Sulaiman ibn Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, he was Khalifa of which tribe? Banu Umayya. So Sulaiman ibn Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, when he came, so, Suleiman said, Sheikh, he said, yeah, Rizni, give me some nasih. Give me some nasih and some wa'az. Humayd al tawil he said, Amir al-Mu'mineen. Amir al-Mu'mineen. He 
Thank you, Sheikh. He said, violate not the boundaries of Allah. Violate not. These were people who were saying things on face because they did not have any fear of rulers, any fear of kings or khalifas, any fear of authorities. Dunke ki chod kaha karte te Allah wali baat ko. Taos ne ka ke don't violate and transgress the boundaries of Allah. Fa inna ka in tajawasta. Because if you transgress the boundaries, وَعْتَقَدَّ أَنَّهُ يَرَاكَ فَلَقَدْ اِجْتَرَاتَ عَلَيْهِ And your aqeedah was that I am violating the rule and Allah is watching me. I am violating the rule and your aqeedah is that Allah is فَلَقَدْ اِجْتَرَاتَ عَلَيْهِ So you showed your bravery and muscles to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think what will be the after the text? Yes, showing muscle to put in. What will happen to you? You will lose your courage. Yes. <laughs> so showing muscle to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what will happen? Yes, with big power you have to be nice baby. Because they don't believe in mercy and kindness. Yes, the Abbasad al Rahman last night, the General Daigal, the revolutionary general of France. Who? General Daigal. He visited Saudi Arabia at that time. Yes, looking for oil and gasoline. So the then Prime Minister of Israel wrote a letter to him. In letter he said that Mr. President, this is a matter of grave concern for the government of Israel as well as the general public. That our reliable friend visited our enemy country without taking us into confidence. You got it? Yeah. Mr. President, this is a matter of grave concern for the government of Israel as well as the general public that our reliable friend visited our enemy country without taking us into confidence. France So General Daigal, he was very smart. He wrote a one-sentence answer and he said that Mr. Prime Minister States believe in interest, not in friendship. <laughs> States believe in interest, not in friendship. Riyasat apne mafadat ko dekhti hai, wo dosti mosti ko nahi dekhti. Say, now that Zelensky guy, he was saying that Baba is my friend. <laughs> so let me show my muscles. He said, okay, boy, I'm coming. <laughs> God. Now people are saying, he is doing good. I say, who's? They have told you that this is a matter of good and bad. This is a matter of state affairs. Who has the power, he will jump. Who can stop him? Yes, in, 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 in human history, all the powerful people, all the po every time they attack the weak or not? Yes. Say, yes. they attack the weak. Yes, our friend at that time, when Mashar Mulasib, the great Mulasib, he was alive and he was ruling Afghanistan. So at that time, when the Allied forces attacked Afghanistan. So the ambassador in Pakistan, of Taliban, at that time, the journalist asked him that what's the big dispute between you and the Western world? He said, very simple. <laughs> so he said, what is that? So the ambassador said, Mulasik, he said, that they say that might is right and we say right is right. <laughs> that they say might, might, might is right and we say right is right. right, is right. right. This world and human, they believe in might is right which is called Jungle Ka Kanun. Dunya mein mein se Jungle Ka Kanun raha hai. Yes, we are propagating a lot human rights, freedom, equality. Where is that we are looking for? <laughs> Have you ever seen every, anywhere? No. Huh? You will observe every time non-equality, violation of human rights. Yes, non-freedom. Yeah, depend that what the situation is, what is your status and position and what is the position and status of your opponent? So anyhow, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you people must say ihdina sirat al mustaqim I am not going to condemn anybody or support anybody. I am giving you only example yes, to support the idea I am giving you. So Satan said la aqadanda lahum sirat al mustaqim That you told them and you taught them that you must make a dua 
and seek for the straight path, but I will be sitting there and robbing them. So you are studying physics. So this Shaitan, Satan, he was a big physicist. So he said, then I will attack them from four dimensions. Look, yes, Khabiz, he knows the dimensions. He said, Summala Atiyanahum, Mimbini Adihim from their front, Wamin Khalfim from their back, Wan Aymanim from their right side, Wan Shamayim from their left side. What so you mean four directions? That from four dimensions, I will attack them. He didn't say six dimensions. Mm -hmm. Yet yeah, that's the kindness of Allah, that Allah has not given him the power on six directions. Yes, to get you an access towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are two ways, still that is free for you. Just get rid of that khabis and take that. So, so Allah said, La atiyannahum, he said, La atiyannahum وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ وَعَنْ إِمَانِهِمْ وَعَنْ شَمَائِلِهِمْ وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرَهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ Then you will see that they will be eating your bread, but they will be following me. They will be drinking your water, but they will obey me. They will be enjoying your name and your delights, but they will worship me. And humans are doing that or not? Yes. So that's why we have been taught that make dua. إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمُ وَأَخْرُ دَعْوَانَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ اللهم ربنا أحسن عاقبتنا في الأمور كلها وأجرنا من خير الدنيا وزاب الآخرة اللهم ربنا حملنا بالقرآن زي ما ذكرنا من القرآن ما نسينا وعلمنا من ما جهلنا وقلنا تعالى لا إله إلا الله نهار فالله خير حافظ